um the first person in the studio guest this morning na um dr yata kanu in the chief education officer and the ministry of basic and senior secondary education and um, senior secondary school good morning and welcome to the program good morning asma thank you for having me all right we also get dr yakama jones in the founder for the Yak jones foundation we don't work stronger one for bring back the culture of reading Salon. Good morning, Doc, and welcome to the Good program. Good morning, Asman. Good morning, listeners. We'll get two distinguished doctors, academic doctors, in the program, and we'll also get potential right, doctors. So we in continue the with the program. 7.42 at the time from our studio clock. And um, we we'll can out to the studio guest them. Like I say, today, now World Read Aloud Day. And uh, we read, we read for change life. And reading, very important. The culture of reading as alone, as the academic, like you say, don't lack in the country. We don't make the picking there now, not the think um, like how really for the thing because of the culture of reading. We're not too day again. When at the program, I get students them, we go for can read um, one paragraph for now because today I read aloud day. But before we come to read guests, we pick in and we go for can read for me this morning. I want for welcome us to. with you dr jones um you get um a foundation we always know they do competition care library go to schools encourage picking them for, um, schools them for encouraging picking them for continue for read because you believe say read they change life um but today now world reading day take me through this day waiting at this day world reading day waiting me so thank you asma so well uh, for my foundation we do work for bring the reading culture back to Sierra Leone and we don't do this for more than three years and waiting we see part this reading program now they say reading now the basis for all other learning so now then they we so like now then in our mantra so whatever would you do now for make sure so we encourage the picking them for learn for it and see how they go use their reading skills and they for learn other things that we tie not only to school work but then um, general development as individuals. So um, the foundation don't the ask for donations of books and we do buy books there and we do donate some books there to needy schools. We do, do reading, quiz and comprehension competitions. We do donate libraries, mobile libraries. And we also now don't launch a new program where we do get reading coaches for going to schools for help the picking them for reading. Make sure say the books that will be given that they actually use them. Okay. For more I don't start on a um foundation and the <coughs> work on a bit on the do whose impact on I don't sense by the picking them so far? So like we don't work with over a hundred schools, not only in Freetown but also in the district. And we can get people that we can go check on the schools and for see say the book they're not just on the shelves on at the book chest there. and with the see say the picking they actually they make effort and they try for read and they always they can give you feedback, say, Oh yes, they like for read, they need more books, they want more people learn for the can do with and even some of them now the parents then can reach out to we say, Oh me picking don't like this book business now when I go the come more off, you know. So like if you you know me they make impact like all man would just don't forget what we or the work or they do so so it's really it did make really good impact so now who set of picking them when i don't the target on the target um the um <coughs> private school and the government schools so in terms of the help <coughs> what they give with the target public schools and in terms of the competition they do both public and private school because the with the target the needy schools then so community schools government schools, um, mission schools, both Freetown and outside Freetown. But then when it's time for the, the competition, we can we can encourage both public and private school then for apply, and they all can compete. And I can tell you, say, the last competition, we may, if, we may get public school within the top ten. So it no matter if not public or private school, as long as we put in the effort and help support the picking and for land for it, they all will be in a very good place. So when I reach out to picking the upline for letting self participate, Mandy? So the first round have been the western area one. So once see how the now small small the foundation just now like now less than five years old so start now the western area and see how we go small small but in terms of supporting schools we do support both in our western area and also uh, in other districts around the country all right so you don't do this for the last um, three years like you say they encourage them um, between them for you donate library books also to the schools there today very important well to academics somebody will say me this is not important to me today read aloud day. what's not this 
why important for me um, somebody eat especially from a very young age so for it the, the benefits there for it is plenty the first one now like i said now the foundation skill if you know sabi it but who other thing then they will you not get for able land you like in a math you like in a science you like in a social studies you like if you know sabi it you go struggle for land then thing then they then where you did you mind the open you did learn new things then you did become more creative you did, you you did, you did become more analytical so you especially like if you did read like the mystery book then then suspense book they go always try to figure out say hey who said this story you go who said how this writer go and let this story and so you begin even try to think ahead of waiting the writer don't put forward and also like where you did read it help you memory because where you did read you get for the member the different character there which them we don't do now the last chapter so where you connect all them dots and they it's like good brain exercise and one other thing we book people are not can think about when it comes to reading. Now some of the other things that will help you for for learn as a human being. And two of the things that we can stand out for me now empathy and humility. Because when you do read different book there and writers then sabi how for like build and character then we you read you kind of go through the emotion and experience the emotion with the the character then gets and you can see sometimes they read the book you cry. So now empathy that we need as human beings for be good citizens, for even for contribute to country in development. If you not get that empathy day for your country and your company matter, man, you go really struggle. How often you can read? Me, I <laughs> read every day. And reading it not necessarily means say I just story book. Me work paper there, <laughs> me lecture notes there. And even when I not get chance for it physical book there, I did listen to audio book there. And even on, on Facebook, I mean, I, I joined the World Economic Forum Book Club so we can discuss book then. day. So at any time, I can get space for it. And of course, I get me two tits then book then for the read and get for the do bedtime reading with them. So every day, I must read something. All right, All continue right. for the between. Now, the program, Dr. Yakama Jones, they encourage um, the try for bring back the culture of reading as alone as he believes say um when you read it change life continue for the return of the program all right we get dr yata kanu we are the chief education officer and the ministry of basic and senior secondary education good morning again and welcome to the program thank you so first for start for terry which now you work with on the do at the ministry um i don't need at the ministry now for uh, three months <laughs> since november as the chief education officer. Uh, the work where they do mainly now for uh, give support to the minister for help them for develop policies, implement the policies and evaluate the policies and see whether educational policies, either the one who don't put in place or the one who meet, whether then they work or not. So at the time advise, at the represent the ministry, uh, now then professional and technical places then, conferences and uh, meetings. Uh, of course, I am the professional and technical head of the ministry, so that is one of the things that I do. Um, I'm in the face of WIAC, the West African Examinations Council, I mean they represent the country, because as you know, uh, WIAC is uh, an examining body that uh, operates in uh, five countries so okay so Tanunami, they yeah them. so basically what is this um they mean to own the ministry oh now be big thing for we because uh from we name you know say we na school education so for read aloud to to people of course uh, dr jones will explain uh tell you why reading is important and how foundational it is to everything the beginning you do I agree with, with 100 percent. If you're not be read, they don't be able to understand mathematics or science or anything. And one of the reasons then we make picking they only do well by mathematics. And not so you no more. Even na uh, countries that uh, say English na uh, the first language, even they read, they're not able to understand what is required of them. They know they do well by that particular uh, uh, examination. So for we as a ministry, this is a very big deal. We are out in the schools today, in the libraries. We go and read to people then. And reading aloud is really very important because I don't want to me own picking them. I, my parents did not do that for me, but because they don't go to school. But maybe no one for me own picking. And I clearly see the benefits, as Dr. Jones say, the comprehension, how it is able to understand. Because as we read, and so I can ask them questions. I, uh, yep, 
a lot with critical thinking skills. For example, we can just take the title of a book, then I can ask and say, okay, based on this title, what do you think say, this story is so good day about? And so we can start. So that prediction, the line I can encourage. And then during the, the, the reading, I can ask some questions such as, uh, what is this character they try for do? Which one are your favorite animal character, for example? So at the CSA, himself, he do work for nine days, so he do for young Pekine. And of course, Mr. said do still for young grand Pekine. So now the same way I want to encourage all parents then for continue for do uh, likewise for them Pekine, because I don't see the benefits. Okay, so as a minister, you know, we don't recognize, recognize this day? No, now the first thing is, we, uh, it's been celebrated. I don't think say it has been done before. I been been savvy about them because now Canada I come out, now they have been there for long. I don't come home now. So I will know about them. But I know that some parents they read to them picking and they carry them go to the library and they do what they can. World allow reading allowed day I don't think it's being celebrated here. So this might be the first time where it happened here. I make with the ASAM up for then we call attention to them. Hopefully, we will continue. All right. <clears throat> well, that's now um, Dr. Yatakanu, Chief Education Officer at the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary School. Today, like we say in our world, read aloud today. And we encourage um, people to read anything to you, Pekin, or anybody where they around you. Well, I get um, studio guests them to this morning, and I want to welcome one of them. Where you could tell me in name. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. James. Okay, what's your name? My name is Gisela Kibobet. How old are you? I'm 10 years old. Are you reading for us this morning? Yes, I'm reading for you. Which book? I'm going to be reading the first chapter of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Okay, so can you um, just take us through the book? Okay. Read for us. Chapter 1 The Boy Who Lived. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Number 4, Privet Drive, were proud to say they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious, because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. Mr. Dursley was, a, was the director of a firm called Grunnings, which made drills. He was a big, beefy man with hardly any neck, although he did have a very large muscle. Mrs. Dursley was a thin and blonde and had nearly twice the usual amount of neck, which came in very useful as she spent so much of her time craning over garden fences, spying on the neighbors. The Dursleys had a small son called Dudley, and in their opinion, there was no finer boy anywhere. The Dursleys had everything they wanted, but they also had a secret, and their greatest fear was that nobody would discover it. <coughs> They didn't think they could bear if anyone found out about the Potters. Mrs. Potter and Mrs. Dursley were sisters, but they hadn't met for several years. In fact, Mrs. Dursley pretended she didn't have a sister because her sister and her good-for-nothing husband were as un-Dursleyish as it was possible to be. The Dursleys shuddered to think that the neighbors would say, if the Potters arrived in the street, the Dursleys knew that the Potters had a small son too, <coughs> but they never, had never seen, even seen him. The boy was another good reason for keeping the Potters away. They didn't want Dudley mixing with the child like that. When Mr. and Mrs. Dursley woke up on a dull gray Tuesday, our story starts. There was nothing about the cloudy sky outside to suggest the strange and mysterious things that would soon happen all over for the country. Mr. Dursley hummed as he picked out his most boring tie for work, and Mrs. Dursley gossiped away happily as she wrestled a screaming Dudley into his high chair. None of them noticed a large tawny owl flutter past the window. At half past eight, Mr. Dursley picked up his briefcase, pecked Mrs. Dursley's cheek, and tried to kiss Dudley goodbye but missed. Because Dudley was <coughs> nothing was now having a tantrum and throwing his seer on the walls. Little tyke, chortled Mr. Dursley as he left home. He got into his car and backed out of number four drive. It was on the corner of the street that he noticed the first sign of something peculiar, a cat meet reading a map. 
For a second, Mr. Dursley realized what he had seen. Then he jerked his head around to look again. There was a tabby cat standing on the corner of Privet Drive, but there wasn't a map in sight. What could he have been thinking of? It must have been a trick of the light. Mr. Dursley blinked and stared at the cat. It stared back. As Mr. Dursley drove around the corner and up the road, he watched the cat in his beer. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for such a nice read. Um, who is the author of the book? The author is J.K. Rowling. Okay, so what do you understand about your passage you just read? It's about um, a normal family, and they've kept the secret of their in-laws being magical wizards and witches, and they know they have a son, and now they're finding out strange things that are happening all over England. Okay. All right, thank, thank you, you so very much, much um, Giselle Akiro Bates. Thank you for coming this morning to read of, um, for us. Today, our world read aloud day. Um, listeners, I hope still that they enjoy the session. Um, today, we educate people them because we want to make and um, bring back the culture of reading. And we believe, say, we they read for change life. Um, the program, Na Good Morning Salon, and they come to you from 98.1 FM. Well, um, we get another handsome gentleman um, waiting to have the carried for me. I'm short passage um, this morning. He also will tell me a name. Um, what's your name, young man? My name is Cherno Ba. Cherno Ba, how old are you? I'm 10 years old. What, which book are you reading for us this morning? I'm reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. You are like Harry Potter, why? <laughs> it's an interesting book and I like how J.K. Rowling came up with this uh, magical world with um, putting one boy as the center and everybody revolving around him. Okay, so let's get some passage from the book. Chapter 17, The Four Champions. Harry sat there, aware that every head in the great hall had turned to look at him. He was stunned. He felt numb. He was surely dreaming. He had not heard correctly. There was no applause, a buzzing, as though of un angry bees was starting to fill the hall. Some students were standing up to, to get a better look at Harry as he sat, frozen in his seat. Up at the top table, Professor McGonagall had got to her feet and swept past Ludo Bagman and Pro Professor Karkardoff to whisper something urgently to Professor Dumbledore who bent his ears towards her, frowning slightly. Harry turned to Ron and Hermione. Beyond them, he saw the long Gryffindor table all watching him, open mouth. I didn't put my name in, he said blankly. You know I didn't. Both of them stared just, at, just as blankly back. At the top of the table, Professor Dumbledore had straightened up, nodding to Professor McGonagall. Harry Potter, he called again. Harry, up here, if you please. Go on, Hermione whispered, giving Harry a slight push. Harry got to his feet, trod on the hem of his robes, and stumbled slightly. He set off with the gap between the Gryffindor and the Hufflepuff tables. It felt like an immensely long walk. The top table didn't seem to be getting any nearer at all, and he could feel hundreds and hundreds of eyes upon him as though each was a searchlight. All right, thank you so much. So who is the author? J.K. Rowling. Okay, so what do you understand about the passage? I understand um, that this wizard, young boy, Harry Potter, just got chosen to do something that he didn't know. Like, he didn't put his name in. He didn't, um, somebody put it in because he's, the, he's trying to fight Lord Voldemort, and somebody put his name in to kill him. But uh, Harry is strong and brave, but he, stop, but he still does it. That is what I learned from this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chernoba. Uh, brilliant <laughs> reading there. Well, today, now we all read a loud day, and we get to begin in the program this morning. We can read for we. I hope say when they enjoy the program. Um, good morning, Saloon. We come to you from 98.1 FM. Well, we go for this short break. Where we come, we continue the program. We continue with the program, Good Morning Salon, where they come to you from 98.1 FM. We they come back to the studio guest them, and I want to bring back the Chief Education Officer, Dr. Yatakanu, 
we are now the chief education officer for the ministry of basic and senior secondary school um doc let me look at how you go get uh, people in generally interested in reading well one of the things we will try for uh do and i'm sure it's going on now for train the teachers then first of all how to do this if the teachers then develop an interest in reading themselves or uh, especially like like for the younger ones then who say this reading aloud is more common because as a teacher educator where they go out on the school then i can really let the idea with the beginning of the are grown around the teacher in foot and then the teacher they read aloud to them they are so engaged and engrossed you know they don't want for commodity so if we ever forget the teachers them forget picking the attention that way they then go able for get them to become interested in reading so that is one way in which we can able for uh, encourage the culture of reading another way now for let me try for work with libraries then for cc uh, the section of the library where the focus on uh, picking them is always well stocked with good books then and one of the things then we uh, me other colleagues and we don't go out today they don't go to the library they don't uh, begin for a link with the library officers them so that uh, uh, they will begin for collect and donate books them so that is another way in which we can get them for okay um not so secret say teachers they not to get time for they teach the picking and how for you in school because they're so overwhelmed they get so yeah. many picking them in school mm -hmm. so now that they may make school monitor them be they for monitor mm -hmm. waiting teachers and they do but now mm -hmm. don't they see say monitors and all day again so waiting on a plan for do well we got uh, school inspectors then uh you are right we don't have a monitor <laughs> around the clock in every classroom but we, we they, uh, send out school inspectors then, um, and then they go at any time. Not to foresee, we they, um, uh, inform them ahead of time for tell them say, oh, we they come and so so and so so they because we don't want for uh, make them do particular things then just because they know say we they go. So inspectors then they go out uh, unexpectedly and then get what they can go look for. So make sure, say, most school then on the complaints the inspector then most times not can they go to school them. Um, I would agree to an extent, especially in the rural areas. The rural areas, then, we don't get complaint for, say, the problem na transportation. Let's see the problem na transportation. But just a few days ago, uh, Catholic Relief Services, then give us a motorbike them. And the first thing we would do with them, motorbike them, they remember, uh, uh, we inspect all them. With the complaints say they don't get transportation for to go do the job what they're supposed to do so we don't donate all them back then to them and um would they also try for see if we go able for push for many they get small allowance we go help them with transportation for go okay so apart from the um school library them we find us in our one great national library we get the ministry don't put stand into consideration say um the country need boko library way not even for picking itself, adults yes. can just pass by and go read. Yeah, uh, this minister will get probably because he gets more picking name, but he really interested in uh, reading. Not only uh, read aloud, they not for, for beginning no more, yeah. now for adults as well, you know, because all over the world, with the Intika now as uh, a human rights issue, you know, literacy being able to read and understand, with the Intika now as a human rights issue all over the world. We get a large number of people um, who are still illiterate, unable to read, and so this minister, one of the things that we need to try to promote, now uh, for make sure say there are community libraries. So you don't tell we all say that we need to try to consider, you know, what we will be able to do in our own little villages, in our own towns, to establish community libraries. Then, so yeah, we we'll don't forget that them at all. Dr. Yata Kanu, sorry, uh, for mixing your name with Dr. Yakama Jun. <laughs> well, in the Chief Education Officer and the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education, this morning, a day for talk about Read Aloud Day, as they did in the day, and encourage people to read, and also picking them for read, and parents for the read to them, picking them. I come over to um, Dr. Jones, where for the past three years, don't they go around school stem and encourage um, schools them and parents them 
for it to then picking them and also make competition. Now, um, some people let me like you, you, you try for first time picking them for for read, for example. They know they they're not just interested in reading. Mm -hmm. How you go get somebody interested in reading? So like, like any form of learning, f for picking there you need for make and fun. So like, where we they start with picking there, we can use a lot of picture books, flashcards, and also for make and less stressful for them. Because read, for learn for it not not means say you for begin cram and spelling thing. For read you get for begin with the sounds then first, the phonics and see how you go string the sounds then together for form the words there. So most of the time now like the teach the teaching approach where you use now you can make the picking and free because some people and feel say for let picking sabigi the first way for sabi do not for begin cram and learn all the sight words there and for spell it off by heart. And then wait then the picking when a slow now slow learner it can make you free. But if the approach now in a fun way teach and different sounds, you have to make the sounds then and the learn through play. It make the picking them become more um, interested in reading. Now I make right now within the foundation you do we don't put out a call for applications for people and for apply for be reading coaches there. And for be for apply for be a reading coach, you just need for pass um you for just get minimum credit at Vask level in English, and then the foundation we defund the training, and then we, part of the um, reading squad they will put form now different different school. Eh? You go able to put them skills and into practice, and part of that system they also we get people that we already sabi read. We can also just come for come volunteer and special any day where they get time. Once again at the school program, we can come in as well. So if you're not a young person, you don't sit to ask exam, you pass English, you not get job and you think so you get the patience and you're passionate about learning and just changing a life, we encourage you to apply. You can drop your application here on Radio Democracy, or you can write to at info at yakjonesfoundation.org, or you can send your application on WhatsApp to 076-679-724. So together we can join for help support, especially the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education, because then self the child, but you know, so these developments we all need for joining, but let we go before. So... Okay. Um, so when I can train them and um, pick up for the young mentors them so that they self go able for mentor other people. Yeah. So like the picking that we don't go through with previous um competition they already don't express interest say when the reading squads they are fully operational, they're not gonna mind for the picking them when after the uh, whenever they get time for can read to them company. So how frequent to not plan for the do them competition yeah? because if we not start them um, and left them um, for a long while, picking them with them for be relaxed. Okay. So Mrs. James go get with Jingle just now and I hope say it go play for we for free. We this this year we next competition will be after the MPSA exams and this year we did do both um, primary school and junior secondary school. So schools then we get um, primary schools then for class six because we don't take MPSC and for junior secondary school the one that we don't take back and then the dinner in the, so now two sets of competition there we get this year. So every year we try to do something for keep the awareness going but the donations and the working with the schools now continuous process year in year out. So the picking away the now the school una, the one that one I can deal with when mm -hmm. I can try for check up on them for know how then they do now then school them. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now I make we call the reading squad and so once you are a member of the squad you get post where they can check up on you, you de get your reading squad gear, your book, your pencil, for the right new words that we need for learn. And also we always you know so that foundation always the bigger, bigger we can ask people and for for snacks for the squad because just for sky for keeping the picking them motivated for the camp. And also we can get we got the five minutes and um, reading challenge where every day at least for five minutes you for read something and you for hold your company accountable say, Me don't do me own five minutes today. Wait till you you don't do your own five minutes. So now we did all together they form this culture of reading all right continue for the week three you they can't talk about the technique for it because you need you know just read and how you're able for comprehend which you don't read we can't we not we can't talk about that the next now the program um you look so excited Nyava. good morning yeah what's your name Nyava Antukata. okay so you're here this morning to read for us yes. and what's the title of your book the title of my book is The Narrow Escape, but I'll be reading A Scottish Legend. Okay, so go ahead. From the 17th to the 19th century, the Macrimmons, pipers to the chiefs of the clan, Macleod, at Dunvegan Castle in the Isle of the Sky, were famous for their skill in playing the bagpipes. 
It is said that the first of the great macrimons took his ability in piping from the hands of a fairy woman. Some say that he was instructed by a messenger of the little folk to appear at a certain green knoll, and that he received the gift from the fairy queen herself, but others believe that it happened in the following manner. Once there was a macrimon who had three sons, two of them big brawny farmers and the third a slim, quiet lad, of whom no one could make very much of. When work was over for the day, That's my reading. Um, a song there away, the producer gave me inside the program, Good Morning Salon. I hope soon I don't enjoy that song day. And today I read aloud day. We encourage people and for read and also read to you picking them. Okay, so we they come to the studio guest them. We get Dr. Yakama Manti Jones from the um, foundation, Yak Jones Foundation, where you can tell you about the technique where people for use for it. Okay, so like I'm just said before, reading we need for make and fun for the picking day, and for learn for read not means that the starting points need for be for cram all the spelling there because then it can make picking for it. Me can usually say the starting points are for like from the alphabet for know the different sounds there and how for combine them sounds then they for make words. So usually here it says the the consonants, the vowel sounds, short o long O, then you begin join them sound and they make two letter words, three letter words. So now small, small. So and different picking and they learn at different paces then. So you get for understand how you picking with not in your own learning style, in your own pace and you structure your teaching around in your own learning style and in your own pace. So you know feel say one picking some can be um, fast learner then, some can be slow learner then. So you need for understand you students and see how you go um, adapt your teaching method for help now picking day for group because you know they teach for the sake of teaching now for help you students or you people for group and when you do make and for now so it did um, it did grow and blossom and it, it even inspire in confidence because picking and they learn from each other so even what you do the five minutes reading challenge now picking the whole in company picking accountable so you don't do your own five minutes and in terms of the comprehension when you read a small passage, una discuss, uh, explain, make you understand, una crack jokes, try for apply and to think the way, way they in real that picking your own surrounding or your own real life. So then kind of way then they be able to see the connection between waiting the read and waiting the happen at the world around that. And one of the other things I can always say, pictures, activities, even this ordinary coloring, painting. The, when they all come together, and a very good thing that we really help picking them for learn, and for keep them constantly. Like I can always say, learn in a continuous process. Even my so I know sabi all I make I can even say, reading can help you for be humble because when you they read some book, they realize it. What good thing they want? No, no. So being, um, getting, um, developing empathy, being humble, a good thing that we really also get from the reading. And one other thing I can always say is that, oh, we can always say life's stressful, but when you don't, when you're in a book, the book don't capture you. It distracts you from even the problem that we're there now, so you can really help with you. Stress level, it can help with your mental health, because some story that you see, say, some of the things that we go through, they're not, not so like out of this world, other people and don't go through. And so, I mean, everybody for just try for learn for read every day, and enjoy because it is really not so pleasure. um most people then can say for lay picking like learn or get the habit for it nine parents then get for helper and we don't see we parents and not together time day for 
put them beginning down for make them able for it. So how best una go for help as a foundation for engage the parents them. So one of the things that the foundation is looking go to school there for talk to parents and people there. And when you talk to people there, I like for let you able for connect with them for and um, help them for understand some of the things then challenges and expectations will get of teachers, pupils and parents then. And sometimes then the parents are not actually literate themselves, but they talk to them say, at least make pay attention to it. If even you not sabi read, even ten call and say, no can sit down five minutes, read for me. And that encouragement, they some picking they look forward to say, ah, this evening I get for read for me, Mama. Oh, I read, I get for explain to her within I read. So now just making the time and grooming them for for no say, na important thing, na fun thing, not a punishment, and it good for you not only for going through school but for going through life. Right. So now something we all need for joining for promote this reading culture. If you sabi read, you know sabi read. If you just try for encourage one more person for learn for it. And as part of the World Read Aloud Day, the Young Jones Foundation self get a challenge, and we don't say every man for grab a book, find an audience and read. And we do that. Send you a picture or a video via WhatsApp on your Facebook page, your Instagram page, or you can tweet button. So this day are. A very good day, and let will make the best use of her for bringing back the reading culture to Sierra Leone. All right, thank you. Well, you get for read for you <laughs> before you go. I know say you're busy, but Adeka also, um, to Dr. Kanu, um, reading and comprehension go together. Sometimes you read, but you know they're actually able to comprehend. Um, what do you think he calls that? <clears throat> A number of things he can cause, Andy. Uh, for example, if you not choose book, we go engage the picking. If you not choose book, no, I, I'm talking not, um, generally now. Like myself, go able for read, but I know they understand. <laughs> if you choose material, we they at your level, okay. and then you try for focus and concentrate. You can able for understand what you read. If you read, you know they understand. That means to say the vocabulary, perhaps it is above you, or you are not really interested in the topic. Or you just read no more uh, because you have to read. You know, as a professor, I know for say most of the uh, reading assignments they work in give me picking they they know one for 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 do them. So they go read them, but you come you ask them questions in class. It's not like I say they don't read nothing at all because they don't really want for do them. But as Dr. Jones they say, if they don't develop that that habit of reading from when they're small, they don't grow for lekam. So whether you are reading for a particular purpose or whether you just read for pleasure no more, I shall say you were able to uh, understand. But coming back to the school students, one thing where I don't she say they work for me as a parent and now as a grandparent, uh, but also as a teacher and teacher educator where they teach uh, me students, them, me student teachers them how for teach reading. Now for just uh, make sure say, like you say, many they read frequently. No left them um, long intervals then. Make sure say if not ten minutes if when they read every single day. The literature they talk say read to them four or five times per day. But most people they don't get that, that time day. But at least if you do them um, one time, you know, then they go help for build the vocabulary a lot. And of course when you don't develop that uh, bank of vocabulary then your intellectual development they grow, you know, you, by the time you go to school, already you get uh, over you get command over 100,000 uh, or more words. Actually, the literature say one million. I don't know about that, but uh, listen to them because so they read. I think say it possible, you know, for let person develop vocabulary up to a million words where you know before you go to school because a six-year-old person, a ten-year-old person, would they read so eloquently? You see, so uh, one one thing we don't work for me for uh, aid comprehension. I have been talked right from the beginning. As I take the book, I read the title. I say, okay, what do you think this story is going to be about? So that prediction, they it did help. And oh. as we read every paragraph, I ask them for explain. Tell me in your own words what in this paragraph they about. You know, so okay. um, so many picking them or even adults and self they on to know about this day and so mm. so as a ministry waiting on our plan for make it be well known and be celebrated because that's very important for picking and not even picking and mm -hmm. big people and mm -hmm. as well 
Yes. Well, I mean, colleagues then from the ministry, they are out in the field today. A large number of us are out in many, many schools. They make banner all, and then they put on some websites then, so that uh, they will inform to the public about this. Uh, uh, Ms. James been asked earlier if this has been going on. Well, as far as we know, now the first time this really, way would they give visibility to this? Maybe some parents they know, but now the first time this way would they actually celebrate this day uh, for me, literacy a human rights issue as it is. So they are out there and we hope they will continue for uh, drum every year now. Okay. Right. Um, so most countries then they then can they celebrate or can do national spelling bee then mm -hmm. competition and they mm -hmm. for encourage speaking. Yes. So as a ministry, which are the step on I go get for take for the organize the national spelling bee and competition for mm -hmm. make picking and go step up. This year Namigo represent the ministry. Namigo represent the ministry at the British Council for the spelling bee uh, competition. Um, not only did we give them a little bit of something, you know, because uh, the lady where they, where they organize them, uh, it bring the picking and come from upline. So all the accommodation, all the food, all everything. So what do you the ministry go do for organize when I own them? Uh, we not organize a spelling B competition yet, although we know theoretically that it gets a lot of benefits. People can just talk to the picking and just memorize no more what Okay, they do memorize. Uh, memorization is not a bad thing as long as it is not your only teaching method, you know, because when you memorize something, you're able to retain them, you know, and so when they do spelling bees, then they strengthen their vocabulary and all in the right. So as a matter of fact, I think, say, you have given me food for thought. It's not just supporting it, but what can we do as a ministry for promote something like spelling bee that has so many advantages? All right, continue for the rest of the program. You save the carrot for a small. We'll go for the short break. <laughs>